This is what a standard AI chip looks like. It's a GPU. You'll notice the complex crossing lines. This design is responsible for the drastic rise in value for its producers, who made the right bet that GPUs could be the engine for AI. Now this is what a far from standard AI chip looks like. Uniform, clean, and really, really fast. Like 18 times faster than its competition. But is this underdog capable of taking a bite out of the hot AI chip market? Jonathan Ross helped invent Google's Tensor Processing Unit, which was the company's underlying chip for machine learning. Its initial purpose was to translate human language into text. We take it for granted now, but the process unlocked a whole world of applications. Based on that experience, Ross founded Grok in 2016 to compete in the semiconductor industry. The basic idea was that computational needs were changing fast as self-driving, artificial intelligence, and more were being developed at a rapid pace. A new architecture, more specifically specialist chips, would be needed to pull that off. Something tailored deeply for its specific task. Even the name Grok was meant to invoke the kind of subject depth the company was striving to represent. Uh, it's Grok, and we spell it with a Q, right. and it's because it comes from a science fiction novel, and it means to understand something deeply and with empathy. A startup in the chip space needs substantial cash. Ross raised $367 million by the end of 2021 from Chamath Polyhipedia, Tiger Global, and more. So basically, take the chip and make it much, much smaller and cheaper, and then make many of them and connect them together. That was Jonathan's insight. But there was a serious issue. Grok couldn't get any customers. It wasn't for lack of trying and is a byproduct of a deeply technical startup that needs a series of things to go right for a product to be made, much less marketed and sold. The idea of a simplified and hyper-specialized design wasn't connecting. For example, one of their first big attempts to break in was to supply chips for Tesla's self-driving effort. After exploring the solution, Tesla said no. And as Elon walked out of the room, he said it would be a real shame if someone was to take the name and slightly tweak it to be an AI company. Just kidding, but it feels like too much of a coincidence. So then Grok tried to sell their chips to high frequency traders who need information and to make trades very quickly. But potential customers in that space also shut the door. The clock was ticking on a startup dedicated to speeding things up. At the time, generative AI accounted for less than 1% of their efforts. Then LLMs hit the mainstream and Grok created a solution to meet the moment. They captured attention with a jaw-dropping demo. You are breaking performance records. The speed is definitely a differentiator and people notice it. We've gone viral this week, so it was a really rapid hockey stick. We literally just show people the demo and they're always shocked at how fast it is mm. compared to what they get on graphics processors. We've built a language processor. Anyone that regularly uses large language models will notice that this is unlike anything on the market. The millisecond you hit enter, this thing is giving you the entirety of its response. To further put this speed in perspective, Grok chips enable LLMs to write a full book in about 100 seconds. Now, that would require a huge context window that their current open source LLMs don't have, but that's some insane speed. Grok's site went from hardly any users to over 400,000 signups in no time, as the company set the new gold standard for low latency. So how did they make it so fast? The speed is enabled through Grok's LPU design that sequentially processes language tasks that the LLMs execute. To put it more simply, the chip is designed to do exactly this task, not a lot of other ancillary tasks that increase complexity and cost. It also has memory on the chip, which is a rarity. The LPU is tailored towards inference, think of the actual messaging with a chat interface, rather than training. That phase requires intense GPUs like the one from NVIDIA. You can pretty easily deduce why speed at this level would matter. The first one that comes to mind is low latency conversations with AI. This means no awkward pauses as the machine processes your answer. 
and Ross loves to demo this feature. Got it. But I don't Tell me something most people things. don't know. Um, here's something interesting. Did you know that octopuses have three hearts? Can you book a reservation at a Michelin star restaurant? Of course. I've made a reservation for you and your guests at a Michelin star restaurant called Item. Who's the chef? The chef at IDM is Dimitris Katravisis. He's a renowned chef known for- Ross has said that LPU chips will enable significantly lower compute costs. Because we're so much faster per chip produced, we're able to get a better cost basis and energy basis. This is clearly to attract startups and developers, but Chamath said they're also getting a lot of inbound from companies featured in the S&P 500. To do this, they're undergoing a production ramp up. Our intention, if we can, is to deploy over 220,000 LPUs this year. And next year, we want to do 1.5 million. There's another interesting part of this story. The entirety of the chip is made in the U.S., which is very unique from its chip-making counterparts that rely heavily on Taiwan's TSMC foundry. There are some critical questions that come from Grok's value proposition. Is speed going to matter so much that the company can take meaningful market share? Does a shorter time to render answers make a difference to the users of large language models? Also, when companies order chips from Grok, they have to order a ton of them. What Grok can handle with 578 LPU chips, NVIDIA can handle with two of their H100 GPU chips. Does this make scaling unfeasible? While it's unclear whether Grok will be able to turn its moment of virality into the backbone for fast AI compute, this is a moment that was a long time in the making for Ross and crew. And if we want real innovation, the kind that drives down costs, solves problems, and unlocks new solutions, then we're going to need many more companies like Grok fighting for a spot at the big boys table.